You know, Matt, that just sounded really salesy. I don't think I can trust you. Please don't call me again. Oh, gosh. Does that ever happen to you guys when you're on a cold call and the person hangs up on you because you sound like every other salesperson? They can't trust you. You sound salesy, right? In this video today, I'm going to share with you guys a few things you can fix on your cold calls right now to sound less salesy, more like a normal human being, to have better conversations with your prospects, to book more meetings. If you guys like the concept of this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification button to get notified every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday when we post our videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's get into it. If you were to ask me a few years ago, Matt, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you think of the word salesperson? It would be pushy. In fact, a few years ago, I was a pushy salesperson. Amateur pushy salespeople all have the same mindset. I need to make something happen every time, all the time. In a previous role, I was getting trained and coached up that if I didn't hang up the phone on a cold call or leave a business that I door knocked without either A, a deal closed, one call closed, or B, an appointment set that that was seen as a failure and it was actually seen as a good thing if I got kicked out of a business or hung up on because that meant I was pushing hard enough, got all the meat off the bone and I was trying hard enough to either get that deal closed or get that meeting booked. When it made no sense for that customer. When you're doing that, when you have that mindset of I need to make something happen every time, all the time, you're going to be pushing your agenda on the prospect. When your agenda probably doesn't make sense for the prospect at that point, that's number one. And number two, you're going to put a lot of undue pressure on yourself. Think about it. I was going into every single door and picking up the phone every time with the mindset that I have to get a meeting booked regardless of where they are in the process, whether they don't like my company or not, or I need to get a deal closed when it does not make sense whatsoever. So mindset is everything in sales. What you need to do first off to not sound salesy is fix your mindset. Stop trying to make something happen and start trying to see what might happen with the business down the road where what you do might come into play. Because when you change that mindset and and simply are trying to see what might happen instead of trying to make something happen, you're going to stop pushing your agenda on the prospect when it doesn't make sense, and you're going to take off all that undue pressure on yourself. I'm going into the call just curious what might happen with the business down the road. I'm not trying to book a meeting. I'm not trying to close a deal, but if the conversation goes that way, awesome. If not, find out timing, put them in the CRM, and call them down the road when it makes sense. That is the foundation for not sounding salesy. Stop trying to make something happen. Start trying to see what ha what might happen down the road. That's the foundation for your success and your success to not sound salesy as a salesperson. Okay, so we got our mindset right. Perfect. Now, what are a few things I need to fix on the phone in order to not sound salesy? Number one, stop using industry jargon and sales buzzwords. This is something that I struggled with early on in my career. I was using all these big words on cold calls that I wouldn't normally use in normal conversation if I'm talking to my dad, my brother, my friend. Right? I was using all these big words that I never, ever used. I look at it like this. Every, guys ever see that show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? used to be out a while ago. Definitely check it out, some YouTube videos after you watch this video. I want every fifth grader on that TV show to understand exactly who I am, where I'm calling from, the reason for the call, and what my call to action is on that cold call. If I start using all these big, humongous words that I don't even know what they mean, and these sales buzzwords that are just ridiculous in, in a conversation, they should never be in a conversation, period, you're going to sound salesy, right? When I started dumbing down my pitch, my results significantly increased because it has a real impact on my tonality and my pacing on the phone call, right? So start dumbing down your language. Use language you would use with your friend, your dad, your brother, whoever it is, and stop using these big words because it's having a huge impact on how you come across on the phone. You're sounding salesy. Stop using it. Your pitch will improve and your meetings will go up. Number two, always be prepared for an objection. I can't tell you how many thousands of cold calls I've made in the past three to four years, but there's not been one cold call that I've made that hasn't had at least one objection. Every cold call you make, every time you pick up that phone, you are going to get an objection. Not interested, we use somebody, whatever it is, you're gonna get at least one and most of the time you're gonna get multiple. Yet amateur salespeople, most salespeople, are not prepared for objections. They wing it. And when you're not prepared and have a process in place to best handle that objection, and you're not practicing and role-playing every single day to best handle them to move the conversation forward, what's going to happen with you guys on the phone is you're going to resort to challenging the prospect. That's what most salespeople do when their strategy is when it comes to getting an objection on the phone. They challenge the prospect. It's very pushy. 
It's very salesy, very used car sales-like. And we don't want to sound like that. Have a process in place. I'm going to put a playlist above my head right here of every single objection video that Francois and I have ever made. Definitely check those out. Always expect an objection. When you expect an objection, you're not going to sound salesy because you practice them every day and you have a process in place, steps in place, to handle it in a respectful way and move the conversation forward. What is your top tip to not sound salesy like every other salesperson on a cold call? Let us know in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys got value from this video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and check out this video here on my top tip for beginners in cold calling, and this video here on how to build rapport on a cold call. Thanks for watching, guys.